Newly released phone records from the State Department reveal that Hillary Clinton knew about the attack in advance and did nothing. Last month, I noted that a federal judge deemed that Clinton would have to testify. This week, Project Veritas is continuing as plaintiffs in a case against one of her tentacle agencies. Supposedly, they used fake IDs to get their story and trespassed. That is what undercover journalists have been doing to get stories for years. Either way, that witch needs to be locked up for the rest of her life. She is likely steaming that all of this is happening. Recall that right before this attack, President Obama made it clear that the problem with Muslim terrorism was under control. If she had sent forces there, it would have made the president look bad. Politics with people's lives. How despicable. Multiple sheriffs across the country took decisive action against people celebrating Easter even when the services were drive-in. Let me get this straight. Even if people are caught social distancing, they still cannot gather. Walmart is safe, with people crowded in like sardines, but going to church where you just sit or stand and listen is off limits. In what universe does that make any sense at all? Luckily, Attorney General Barr is on the case. Sheriffs and states are dropping the charges after he threatened to get involved. At least we have an administration that will stand up to all of this nonsense. The stay-at-home order is a draconian measure and an experiment by the government to see how easy it is to lock people inside of their homes. Mark my words, when this is over, there will be another threat, and government agents will not forget how easy it is to confine people to their homes. Case in point, North Carolina. Multiple people came together to continue to protest an abortion clinic while remaining six feet apart. Among the arrestees was David Benham. They were sure to point out that there was a park right across the street where people were not practicing social distancing, but no arrests were made. This was not about the stay-at-home order. This was about mothers being able to kill their children with impunity. In Washington state, the army was sent to a field hospital to deal with patients with the China virus. The only problem is that when they got there, the hospital was empty. Cuomo spent a long time complaining about not having ventilators, but is now giving the ventilators to states that need them. Even Dr. Fauci is pointing out that there are far fewer cases than anticipated. He credits social distancing. It has absolutely nothing to do with the models that failed time and time again as well as the hospitals that called anyone who died with the virus in their system as having died from the China virus. The Democrats always want to fund a myriad of projects that have absolutely nothing to do with the price of bat soup in China. Pelosi's district is a cesspool while she is wealthy from a political career. She and her cohorts are trying to get aid to Iran into the bill that is supposed to help Americans. In other words, she is giving money to a terrorist state that we are essentially at war with, but not to her own people. And that is why they live in a swamp. Many people believe that it is the government's role to raise children, if the parents are Christian. Does that seem like an exaggeration to you? California is competing and winning at the competition of being the most deplorable state in the union. A bill over there would allow the school to hide abortion and transgender procedures from their parents. First of all, even if liberals do believe that the child is nothing more than tissue, 
the school would have to send a note home if a tooth got knocked out. Second of all, if the kid needs to take any medication, the parents have to sign off on it. If passed, the school would not have to tell the parents that the child is permanently altering brain and body chemistry for the rest of his natural life. When President Trump first touted hydroxychloroquine as a possible cure for the China virus, the liberal media accused him of selling snake oil to the American people. Even if President Trump did simply say it was an option that should be tried. Now even the fake news is having to admit that it is working. South Dakota is even starting a round of trials with the FDA-approved drug. Why was the president attacked for trying to save lives? Because orange man bad. Trump is not afraid to say exactly what is on his mind, even if it hurts someone's feelings. And that is one of the things that I love about him. Whether it be on Twitter or at any press conference or interview, he will not sugarcoat anything. Case in point, he made a huge blow to the fake news this past week. Before the regular China virus press conference, he had the reporters watch a video montage of all of their lies and deception about the virus. Even pointing out that they claimed he should have acted sooner, even though... Even though when he cut off travel from China, this was racist and xenophobic. He also took decisive action after one death. The media then went on to call their own words propaganda. Moving on to the upcoming election, his campaign released this ad. Yo. This is a crisis. This is no time for Donald Trump's record of hysterical xenophobia. Biden's son inked a billion dollar deal with a subsidiary of the Bank of China. China is going to eat our lunch? Come on, man. They're not bad folks, folks. Since the outbreak, the Communist Party has been mobilizing overseas organizations to buy local supplies and send them to China. It is in our self-interest that China continue to prosper. What a beautiful history we wrote together. Banning all travel will not stop it. The president is right. The travel restriction on China, as every public health official we've talked to said, bought the country time. That was a very smart move right There's there. Hysterical xenophobia. Here, my xenophobia. I complimented him on, uh, on dealing with China. I'm not going nuts. In summary, China caused this problem, and while Biden was defending that nation, Trump was standing up for hours. I would like to point out that the Democrats chose this guy over a literal socialist. Just pointing that out. Last week, I commented that Senator Lindsey Graham argued for cutting off all funding for WHO. Now, President Trump is joining the pledge. The World Health Organization parroted the Chinese propaganda that the virus could not be spread person to person just to protect their crumbling street cred. If the organization was unbiased, they would have reported the truth, but they did not. While I say that it should be defunded permanently, at present it may just be defunded until a change in leadership occurs. Meanwhile, Bill Gates wants people to take a vaccine, which he will make a fortune off of. Because the flu vaccine eliminated the flu. Remember that there are many strains of the flu, and the medical experts just guess as to which one will be most prevalent each year. Some doctors are even suggesting that you cannot go out without a paper that says you have been vaccinated against the China virus. This means that you will not be able to buy or sell without a piece of paper. I find it difficult to believe that someone who believes that we need to control human population growth cares about saving lives. Maybe I'm just blowing smoke. Maybe I'm completely off my rocker. But that is just my opinion.